Hey, yo, what's up, Joel? It's Tuna. Today I wanted to make a little presentation, or um, a little scuff presentation, about my plan for early league and what I plan to do to make early league gains. It's something that I'm, uh, you know, often asked, and I thought since um, patch notes are upon us and we don't really have an idea of what builds we can do and things like that, uh, I just wanted to sort of, you know, put this one out there because this is going to be basically uh, applicable to any league start. Um, yeah, I mean, this is not really going to change, aside from maybe some balancing, tuning done to the Alice passives and things like that. But the strategies are very adaptable to those situations, so... Honestly, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be fine regardless. So, yeah, the first thing I wanted to talk about is the importance of stash tabs. Uh, unfortunately, if you want to succeed in Trade League, this is one of those things in Path of Excel that I consider to be uh, very pay to win. Because the more stash tabs you have, the more advantage you have over people that don't have the stash tabs. And honestly, it's just, it's overwhelming how much of an advantage you have in Trade League, having maybe like five to 10 dump tabs where you can dump everything. So when I get to Blood Aqueducts, I don't particularly run Blood Aqueducts, but that's when you start seeing um, a good amount of rares dropping on the floor and you're getting a decent item level so that you can get like T2 resistances, T1 life, uh, 30 movement speed, right? So things like that. So what I will do is I will uh, pick up all the rares, all the jewelry, and all those sort of things. I do not do Chaos Recipe because I think that Chaos Recipe overall as a solo player takes up too much time and too much effort to actually, uh, you know, get, get some currency out of it. Um, what I do instead is I don't look at any of the rares that I drop. I ID everything and I put them in stash tabs ascending from... Um, let's say from 1x down to 2c. So what you can see from the picture is I just price individual tabs from 1x, 50 chaos, 45 chaos, 40 chaos, 35, 30, 25, uh, 20, 15, 10, 7, 5, 2. And every like uh, half an hour, 20 minutes, I will, for example, take the 1x price tab and I will put that down to 50 chaos. And then half an hour later, put it to 45 and then put it to 40 and put it to 35, 30, 25, and so on until you get down to two chaos and you want to essentially like put everything in the, two, in the two chaos tab at the end and if nothing has sold from that tab then from there you could potentially get the uh, items from for the chaos recipe uh you know with like all the leftover jewelry all the leftover everything or essentially you would just uh, vendor everything for alteration shards and alchemy shards and things like that so, which is essentially what I actually do. I just fender everything once it gets to the 2 chaos price tab. But uh, the whole concept of doing this is to minimize the amount of time that you have to spend looking at your pri uh, looking at your stash tabs and maximize the amount of time that you're spending uh, farming the atlas, progressing the atlas, getting into maps and creating more value, right? Because early league, everything is value. Uh, early league is the most exciting time for any Path of Exile player. The economy is the most exciting aspect to playing Trade League because uh, essentially like nothing is saturated. Um, what you have is just a severe lack of items on the market and people looking for those items. Uh, people are looking to upgrade their builds. Um, they're looking to push, push higher and higher into maps. So what they will need is they will need upgrades. And essentially sometimes they will look for specific things on these items that you might not necessarily think are good, um, but they do, you know? One man's trash is another man's treasure. So that is why I recommend that not actually looking at the items because it's very hard to evaluate whether uh, something is actually worth a lot or not early. And um, yeah, you just put them in these dump tabs and you just sell as you go. One thing that might happen from time to time, it doesn't happen very often, but one thing that might happen is that you dump a lot of items into these tabs and then you get instantly whispered for those items. So what you will do in this situation is if you get an instant whisper from a few people, these guys are trying to flip you, right? So what they're trying to do is they're trying to see this guy is selling it for this much, but I know because I've, have, I've set up this life search, I know that it's worth more. Um, so in this situation, what you will do is you will individually price this item or raise the price on that particular item to a little bit more and see if people still whisper you. And if they don't, then you lower that over time. So essentially, I usually have um, additional tabs which have individual pricings on them, which I will reserve to maybe like 
um, uniques that are that I know are valuable or things like that. So yeah, to take from this slide, dump everything. Don't look at rares and uh, you know try to make as many sales as possible because early early currency is honestly goes a long way early on, and it will be very good to like later on fund your uh, you know your gains. Uh, one other thing to note though is to try not it's sort of like you have to prioritize what kind of trades you want to leave your map for so if you're just you're going to be getting spammed for two chaos trades and things like that um and this is going to happen over and over again and honestly like if it's a lot of them coming at once so if you have like three or four or two chaos trades queued up then you can go back to your hideout but if it's just one you're better off just finishing your map asking the guy to wait and then doing it after yeah, make sure that you ID your rares, dump them in uh, tabs, and uh, yeah, have it from uh, ascending price of one exalt all the way down to two chaos, and sell them over time, right? Uh, so yeah, that, that is something I do early league to make some quick currency. Next, uh, it's really important to make a cheap but effective build, which is something that we have no no idea about this league. We have absolutely no idea what's going on with the nerfs upon us. Um, we don't know what's really going to be that good. Generally, it's always been defaulting back to miners or damage over time builds like Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, and things like that. But we're getting patch notes soon, Copium, and we don't really actually know exactly what's going to happen with these builds, how much they're going to be nerfed. But from what Chris was, uh, from what Chris said, right, which he said they're not buffing underperforming uh, skill gems, rather they're just nerfing all the overperforming ones. I have a feeling that <laughs> the, the good builds are still going to be good. Uh, they're just going to be less good than what they used to be. So, you know, uh, you're still probably better off going for a build that used to be meta and um, rather than going for something extremely experimental and then potentially getting stuck on a build or something like that. So, yeah, still, I think damage over time builds like Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, uh, poison, Bladefall, Blade Blast, or essentially just a miner is probably the way, the best way to go about it. Miners, I primarily uh, recommend for bossing. They're not that great to map with, uh, but damage over time builds like Toxic Rain, Caustic Arrow, Bladefall, Blade Blast, you know, those are pretty good for mapping, so those would be my pick there. And ideally, I have like a ailment immune build. We don't know what the sentence is going to be looking like, but you know, uh, Hopefully, Raider, uh, Pathfinder, and Elementalist, and Inquisitor still have the ailment uh, immunity. So those are the four ascendancies that I would actually recommend to leak start with, if you're looking to have like an easy time, um, essentially leak starting, right? Uh, but that is all subject to change, of course. Next, I want to talk about having a plan. It doesn't have to be complex. I think there's this misconception in the community that. Uh, the 1% or whatever, you know, they're like these elaborate five heads that just have these complex spreadsheets. They're looking straight into the matrix, uh, plugging directly into the into the mainframe to figure out the, the YX calculations on how to make currency. Dude, it's not like that. We're literally just papegas. We're uh, neckbeards. We just we like to play the game a lot. We just, all we do is we just run maps, have fun. And uh, try to make as much currency as possible just by like doing very basic things. Um, so yeah, there's different strategies that I like to go over. Uh, there's the low versus high tier maps. There's early bossing, rushing Atlas passives, uh, rushing Cirrus, League mechanic juicing, uh, and Guardian map farming, and crafting. So those are the main things that we're going to talk about in this presentation, which I think are the best ways to make currency early. So in terms of Atlas regions, these are the Atlas regions that I would try to rush some passives onto. It's pretty easy to get passives onto these regions as soon as you proc Maven. Uh, you know, you just do your 10 boss rotations and you get like uh, two or three sets of them and then you can pretty much already get everything that's good in that in that region. So Leader Arthane um, is good in, in red maps, so high tier maps for red blighted maps, Breach and Heist. Uh, so you can get high tier contracts, high tier blighted maps. And, um, you know, uh, high tier breaches like Chayula and things like that. So this is not really strategies that are entirely dependent on watchstones because early on you want to have zero investment uh, strategies. Uh, watchstones are going to be expensive as they always are because people are looking to fill out their atlas with uh, 
you know, with these watch zones and things like that to rush red tiers. So essentially you want to make strategies or run strategies that don't require high investment to actually get going. So Lear Arthane is pretty good in that. Um, all you really need maybe is a Blighted Scarab or something like that. And then you just you just go off and since there's going to be such a lack of Blighted Maps, Contracts and Bridge Splinters, uh, you're going to make a decent amount of currency doing that. But out of all of these, it's the one that I would least recommend because it requires pretty much most investment out of all of them. So, yeah. But the Glenich, uh, Glenich is actually a really good area. Uh, because it has corrupted strong boxes, which has the potential to drop six links. It doesn't drop an insane amount of them. Um, but you just sort of want to run a lot of maps. As many maps per hour as possible. And eventually you're going to drop a bunch of six links. These six links can go anywhere between like 10 to 20 chaos. And um, if you get one of them every like three, four maps, that's already really good, right? Uh, that's already pretty decent. Considering that you can run these in lower tier maps and just spam the maps. Another one that you can get from here is temples. Uh, you have the temple of Atsoatl. Uh, you know, you can basically get a lot of uh, returns out of that by uh, juicing the temple, or not essentially, not not juicing, but using all the Alva master missions that you do get. And if you don't get them, there's going to be an elevated chance to spawn Alva, anyways. And you just make your temple as good as possible. Yeah, you just run the temple. Essentially, like, you don't really want to go for, uh, you know, corruption temples and things like that. Like, the gamble is okay. Uh, the, you know, the sacrificial. But those are not really the good ones. You just want to get maybe, like, the map room. And the the early rares are also very good because people are looking to get those. Uh, chests are usually not that good because people are looking for six links. But other things such as weapons and killing the architect is always good early on. Uh, another one that's just, uh, usually my choice is the one that requires the least amount of investment early on is uh, Hayward Hamlet. This is because the, the essences are really good there. You can basically spam many, many uh, maps per hour and get a lot of essences and then upgrade them through your essence tab. These can be sold in bulk. Early crafters are honestly fiends for these. They will buy them at a, at a very good price and they will pay more in bulk to make uh, item bases and use their essences on things. And also, you can corrupt uh, the Roji Bivs. So essentially, you can corrupt the, uh, certain certain watchstones, uh, sorry, certain uh, essences. You get uh, essences of delirium and that sort of stuff, right? Which sell for a lot more. So yeah, that's um, that's something that you can do, and it's actually what I plan to be doing uh, in Hero Camlet. Uh, so long as like obviously these passives are not nerfed, but even if the essence passive is nerfed, it's, I think it's still going to be very strong because. Uh, generally it always guarantees that you're going to get an essence in the map so that in itself already creates value for basically nothing that's really good uh in turns end we got invasion bosses invasion bosses are pretty good they drop uh, a lot of uniques early on a lot of decent rares so and they add a lot of monsters to your map so getting invasion bosses in turns end is also a very good option to run on like very like you know day, day one and two and things like that so yeah, it's something that I would recommend if you want to go for a zero investment. That that's definitely it. You can also always eventually add more things to to your maps, right? Like if you want to go into trading and you want to get some scarabs potentially, you want to get some sextants, uh, you want to get uh, you know maybe some watchstones and things like that. You can do that on top of. So everything will just compile, right? As you get currency, it's always worth it to add a little bit more to your map, but I would not like recommend going for harbingers and spending five exalts on a harbinger uh, watchstone, right? Because that's gonna take a long time to pay back. And early league, you're just looking for fast turnover. And if you're paying off a debt or something, right? Like it's gonna take ages for that to actually come to fruition. And so, yeah, you're just looking for fast returns and just getting as much done as possible in that very very precious leak start period where the market is still fresh uh there's no supply of anything and you can be sort of like the king of a market for a couple days so yeah that is uh, for sure uh something i would recommend is these uh these zones next i want to talk about low tier maps i think this is something that people uh undervalue because historically league mechanics have not been actually um they haven't really scaled that well with map tiers. 
bar maybe a small perk that you get going into high tiers like give a uh, like for example ultimatum right ultimatum the only thing that you could get out of uh, red tier maps was the chance for uh the task manager to spawn right and his chance in the thousands and thousands of maps that i did in the league itself was one and a half percent now we're we're not going to be sure whether it's going to be such rng going going forward with um you know the con uh these like maps that we're going to be getting from expedition uh but i suspect that you're going to be able to create just as much or nearly just as much value out of uh running low tier maps in comparison to red tier maps and the perk about running low tier maps is that you can run a lot of them per hour you don't have to focus too hard into you don't have to focus too hard into making your build insane right because you could just just sort of neglect your build run as many maps per hour and then once things get a bit cheaper and once you've sold those things for more expensive then you can upgrade your build and go into a higher tiers so actually this is what i'm going to be doing early league I'm going to be farming low tier maps for a couple of days rather than rushing high tier maps. Uh, and I will go into that a little bit later, but essentially it's just because so I can create basically a pool of currency, which then I can invest into other things. In this case, I'm going to be playing with Elishar as I always do, because he's, he's a really good friend. We're basically the, the, the boys, you know, like it's me and Ellie. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be farming low tier maps so I can invest into his build and buy uh, bosses sets and things like that. So he can do bosses, which is what he wants to do. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be basically the initial fund. And I think the best way to do that is to spam as many maps per hour in low tier maps and to then later progress into higher tier maps. So yeah, most important thing is spend as little currency as possible into your build and choose a good Atlas region that will complement your uh, strategy of zero investment, a lot of maps per hour. So yeah, that is the low tier map strategy. Another is uh, the high tier map. So this, obviously, you need to upgrade your build so you can run these comfortably and efficiently. There's nothing quite as frustrating as having a terrible build, getting into red maps and dying four times a map. Like, after you're doing a 14-hour session on League Start, even more, maybe like 20 hours, who knows, like how much you want to poop sock or whatever. But it is the most frustrating thing you'll ever experience in Path of Exile, I think. Constantly going back to hideout, loading screen after loading screen, just constantly dying. It's the worst. It's honestly it's just, it, it, it taxes your brain. And after a few hours, you're just going to go crazy, right? Uh, so it's essential that like you have to invest into your build to run these comfortably. Do not like, uh, neglect your build, which is actually something I'm guilty of doing a lot in the past neglecting my build and going into red tier maps and just smashing my face against the wall until something worked right like it sucks don't do it invest in your build buy the things that you need and then progress from there yeah you can choose a region that benefits from high tier maps so this is important so back onto the lira arsane um uh region that we talked about before is uh you're gonna get higher higher tier uh blighted maps if you run blighted scarabs there right uh, you're gonna get higher splinters from, uh, you know, from breach and things like that. So, then, like noticing which region gives better rewards from higher tiers is very important. To, is a very important thing to to look at. Because if you're not, if you're just like running any region that would have been good in white maps, then why not run white white maps instead? And they're cheaper. You can spam them. You can sustain them without any, you know, without having to invest. And yeah. Definitely choose a region that benefits from map tiers. Uh, roll and corrupt your maps ideally uh, for more map returns because uh, a very profitable thing about being in red maps is that early league red maps are really expensive. So a lot of your gains are going to be coming from selling these maps. Your over sustains, you got to sell them, man. I know people don't like selling maps, but you have to sell them. Super important. Um, so yeah, selling maps that you don't need or maybe the maps that you need for your atlas completion but past like 100 atlas completion it doesn't really matter get your atlas completion to about 100 before entering red maps and then just sell them because you're going to be making like 12 to 15 chaos per map that's just crazy amount of currency early on if you're early into red maps so yeah uh, another thing about red maps is that you get higher tier item bases so higher tier item bases are 
lot of currency. This is something that you can get also by going into item level 83 in Delve. So you're going to be dropping a lot of higher tier item bases. It is good to have a filter that filters out common bases that people would like to use. So maybe jeweled foils, item level 83, those are good ones. Uh, maybe good boot bases like sorcerer boots. The problem with boots is that people generally look for item level 86. So getting item level 86 rares is quite difficult, but um, then you can just look for gloves, sorcerer gloves, vile regalias, um, good wand bases like imbued wands or crystal wands or, you know, like that sort of stuff. Maybe like two-handed swords. Um, so yeah, like those are things that you want to have on your filter. Make sure that you're filtering item level 83 up and just sell them on because... Uh, item level 84 plus bases generally go for quite a few chaos early on since crafters are just looking to buy them in bulk lab runners are looking to run helmets in bulk as well item 84 85 plus uh, so yeah uber circlets obviously very good so, as well for uh for lab runners there's gonna be people running lab day one and two so if you're stocking a lot of uber circlets People are going to buy them very, very fast, like 5 chaos or something like that. So, yeah, people will for sure appreciate you offering bulk services in that regard. So that's the high tier maps. Another thing that we want to go into is uh, Guardian maps. So if your build can run them, if your build can handle it, this is a really good strategy that you can do. Uh, buy Guardian maps, sell the fragments and map returns. The Guardian maps, it's honestly like pretty insane for the past ever since the alice rework what's what's been happening is that guardian maps they cost as much as the equivalent fragment that you get from the boss because people can't really run them early so essentially what you're doing is you're providing a service by people that just want to do bosses like just want to do shaper or elder what you're doing is you're providing a service by running the maps for them providing the fragment and then they will you know pay Maybe the premium to get those fragments and things like that. So, yeah, you run the you run the guardian map, you get the fragment, and then you sell the fragment and the excess maps. So it's just pure profit. You're gonna be dropping a lot of uh, high tier maps. Essentially, you're running at the map at zero cost. Alternatively, you could use this as a strategy to build up your atlas as well, since you're gonna be dropping a lot of red maps. But I think it's really essential that you complete your t uh, you know a lot of T15 and 16s on your atlas. Otherwise, you're not going to be dropping those maps. It's important to have T15 and 16 maps completed before you get into Guardian maps so that you can drop those maps and if you want to complete your Atlas then, you horizon those maps and, you know, get different uh, maps that you potentially have not completed, complete more, and then sell the excess. Uh, one thing is that you want to rush Guardian's aid. So Guardian's aid is really important. Uh, to farming guardian maps as well. It's something that's like a little bit difficult to get early because you have to run uh, special invitations. But what Guardian's Aid does is, as you can see here, it makes it so two guardians have uh, two guardians will spawn. So once one guardian reaches 33% uh, life, the second guardian will spawn, and he will have a chance to drop their uh, unique item or fragment, respectively, right? Depending on uh, which boss spawns. This is kind of sketchy early on because, you know, fighting two guardians early is, is pretty bad, like with, a, with, with, not so, with, with not so great of a build. So again, you're going to need your build to be pretty damn strong and to be able to handle this. But since we're softcore gamers, like in this situation, I think it's fine to get to the boss and then spend two or three portals doing it, right? So long as you're 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 doing it like kind of efficiently, not spending like 20 minutes into a map. <laughs> um, and yeah, and again, lastly, it's really important to sell all uniques and high item level bases from these maps. Item level bases are going to be a bulk of your currency, so 100% something that you should be doing. Set aside um, set aside a special tabs for them and sell them. ID all your rares, like we showed in the earlier slides. ID all your rares, dump them into separate tabs, and, you know, take their price down over time. Yeah. Uh, I also want to go over bossing. So, uh, bossing is really, really good early. Generally, it's it's not that good later on. Uh, you know, like one week into the league, but very early, it's really good. It's very trade-intensive, though, as you'll have to be buying sets. Um run the bosses so even if you want to run a Tsiri, Uber, Tsiri, any boss you need to have sets. 
This is if you want to be only bossing. You can do Cirrus as well, but Cirrus requires a lot of, uh, you know, running maps in between. So it sort of breaks the flow of bossing. And overall, I think Cirrus is just something that you should be doing over time, but you shouldn't be hard focusing on it as you can make a lot more currency just running set bosses. So yeah, choose a boss you practice that. Make sure your build can run them well. And ideally run bosses that people don't enjoy running. Like Atsiri, Uber, Atsiri and Shaper. Nobody really likes running those bosses. But if you're devoted to making a lot of currency early on, you need to be sort of doing things that people don't enjoy doing, right? You gotta consider that like in Path of Exile, it's just like real life jobs that people don't like doing. You're gonna get paid more for doing that. Um, it's, just, it's just the way it is. And uh, also there's gonna be less competition. But at the end of the day, it's also very important that you're having fun, right? So it depends what you enjoy particularly. If early, early league, I think it's fine to sort of take an L and do something you don't really enjoy because you get more enjoyment out of making currency than actually running the content. And then later on, you can enjoy yourself even more by having that currency and doing whatever the hell you want. So yeah, that is a, you know, that is a strategy that you can go. What I did uh, at some point, I ran like 200 Uber series on like day two of the league and we made like three mirrors doing that. It was awful, but looking back, you know, it set us up for the entire league. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was really good. Uh, but also consider that you can run, um, you know, you can you can run Elder and I would Uber Elder on day one, but Uber Elder thing, uh, like the Uber Elder uniques, they, they depreciate very quickly as people get into Uber Elder. And you're going to be left with uh, gambling on Watcher's Eyes. And early league, you do not want to gamble. It's the last thing you want to do is gamble. You always want to look for things that you pretty much can consistently get profit out of. Even if it's like a couple chaos for the worst outcome, that's still good. Because when you do get the good outcome and you make like three exiles off of it, you know, it's fine. But if you're losing on average like 50 chaos per set to then hit the jackpot and get like a GG Watcher's Eyes or something like that, like... That is too much of a gamble. That's something that you do not want to go for early league. You just want to look for consistent gains and uh, go about it that way. Gambling in Path of Exile is never a good thing early. You can do, you can gamble later when you get currency. It's fine. You do whatever makes you happy, right? But early, early, I think it's a really, really, really bad call. But yeah. Lastly, you got to do your best to never break a set because breaking a set is basically like throwing currency in the in the trash. So. I would recommend like where the league still hasn't started so basically what you want to do is you want to go now on a character throw throw some budget gear a five link or something and practice these bosses see how it goes practice the boss it's really important i think it's something that people underestimate a lot of these bosses they're they're really unforgiving but if you know the mechanics and you know how to run them well you can uh yeah you can run them almost without fail, like without without ever breaking a set, so even on less extremely budget gear with ZDPS. So, yeah, definitely put your practice in. Uh, we got crafting. So crafting is something that Elishar is very, very good at. Uh, I would check out his YouTube. He puts out a lot of crafting videos. He's going to put be putting out a lot of crafting videos early in the league as well of what he's been doing, what he's up to. So, yeah, check out Elishar's YouTube. I will link it in the description, so yeah, check that out. Uh, if on the device, spam harvest on T10 plus maps. That's because T10 plus maps allows you to basically craft on any uh, item level base. So yeah, and then you're going to just be mainly looking for reforges. Uh, crafting medium clusters is really good with those reforges or with scour binding spam or harvest reforges. I made a video in the past about the bases that I used my reforges on and I guess that is something that I will also link in the description that you can check out. So just basic things that I will use, like item bases that I will use to reforge on. Uh, so yeah, you're not really looking for like uh, augments or things like that. You're just looking to reforge a lot. Every map, like consider uh, Harvest was I think 17 chaos on the map device or something like that this league. Consider how many reforges you get out of that with the Alice passives. Uh, and then you sort of... Look at how much the fossil equivalent of that many reforges would cost. The fossils would be extremely, like, a lot more expensive in comparison to um, reforges from Harvest. And the thing about reforges from Harvest is that they always guarantee at least one 
of uh, the type of modifier that is tagged, right? So if it says uh, reforges with chaos modifiers more lucky, you will always get one chaos modifier. That is like well rolled or something like that, right? So yeah, harvest is still extremely OP. As long as it's not like completely nerfed out of the face of the earth, it's still going to be a very good one to run. And if it's not on the map device, I think that's fine as well, because Hamlet will still be a good region to run, regardless of if Harvest is on the map device or not, since you're probably going to be able to run Essences or June. Um, so it's going to be a good region to farm early for, yeah, all three of those things, Essences, June or Harvest. And even if it's like a 10%, 5% chance to spawn it, uh, you know, one in 10 maps, you're going to be able to create value out of uh, a bunch of bases that you have just running in your tab. And uh, you can also use fossils, fossils if available. I don't really recommend fossils too much. Fossils are kind of expensive and a pain in the ass to buy early. It's because people generally only have a stack of one or two. So you have to do a lot of trades. And yeah, honestly, unless what you're doing is only specializing in crafting and uh, you're just living in your hideout I think fossils then is uh, you know a good option but if you're not doing that it's probably better to be doing something else in the meantime uh, alt spamming is also an option if they're cheap but generally they're not really cheap uh, I think it's probably better to sell alterations than to spam them early league or to use scour, uh, scour bindings or scour Alex alternatively if they're nerf binding orbs. Um, yeah, then use uh, alteration spamming. So we'll have to see about that though. And that brings us uh, to uh, the last slide, which is the chat Q&A. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, throw them at me. We're going to fire through these. What awaken win level should I uh, push before farming low tier maps? Just run awakener level zero. So in terms of awakener level, I think when you're farming low tier maps, uh, you can also, you can always just like get enough watchstones to put one watchstone everywhere aside for the map the region that you're running. So if you want to run uh, white maps in Hamlet, for example, you can basically just run your atlas like this. So one watchstone in each region aside for the region that you're running. Uh, you're still going to get some overlap with uh, being able to draw up higher tier maps, uh, maybe if they're connected. But overall, see that like the highest tier is tier 4 and then you got tier 6 here. So it's going to be really, really hard to drop any map aside for the region that you're running. So you'd probably be at Awakener level 2. You want to grab like, what is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 watchstones before you really start farming the one region. And getting the 7 watchstones is really fast because you're going to run one set, one set of... Uh, Conquers on the um, outer regions. That usually takes a couple of hours at most. Uh, and then you can run, so you got four. And then you can run three Conquers in whatever region, uh, region you want to start leapfrogging off of. And yeah, that's about it. What do you think about New Vestir, a uh, Legion farming day two or three? And uh, when I drop Atlas Regression and focus on my specific region. So, the thing about New Vestir is that even this league, it wasn't that good. Uh, it's pretty decent, but you're also pretty dependent on being in red tiers, right? And getting Legion Scarabs, unless Legion is on the map device. That's the caveat, right? So, if you have the if you have Legion on the map device, then that is a good strategy. But if you have to buy Scarabs, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even consider it. Like, Scarabs are going to be expensive, and you're better off doing a, separately, uh, a separate uh, region that doesn't require quite as much investment. Is it better to switch farming strategies after the first couple of days or just sticking to one thing? Yeah, I think um, a couple of days on league start is a lot of time, right? So you kind of, you do a strategy until you feel that you got what you wanted out of that. So it's, it's almost like, it's almost like cashing in your chips, you know? You're doing something for like a day or two or something like that. And then you're just like, all right, it's time to graduate this to something else. Let's cash in our chips. Let's move on. Now I get to do higher tier maps or invest in my build a little bit to do something else, right? So yeah, yeah, it's 100% uh, better. Assuming you start like five uh, days late, what would you opt for? Is it, I'll be missing out on the first few days. Um, if you're going five days late, things are going to be relatively cheaper. 
So I would opt for just um Honestly, I'll be completely honest with you. This is going to this is going to suck, but 5 days in, probably running heist is the best thing to do because heist contracts are going to be cheap and you're going to need almost nothing invested into your build. And you can just run those and make a decent amount of currency from it. Or alternatively, running blighted maps is also good because you don't need to have an atlas completed to run blighted maps, right? You just buy red blighted maps, and as long as your map, uh, as long as your build can run them, you can do that, create value out of that, and then move on to something else. Yeah, I would, I would say like, yeah, blighted maps or ice, something that doesn't require you to have a finished atlas, which usually takes a couple of days, because you're already five days late. If you then have to set up your atlas for like two days, um, you're gonna miss out on the early rush, the early one week rush, right? So yeah. In case map sustain is bad in the new league, uh, I prefer to make like 70 completion at least without getting any washstones. Only after that, proceed with leapfrogging. Um, no, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, map sustain has been like yeah, relatively bad, but it's never that bad. Like the new the new Atlas is insane for map sustain. Uh, even this league, a lot of people were complaining, but it was it was really not that bad. The only thing I would really recommend is getting like around. 100 uh, bonus objectives completed before you get into red maps. Otherwise, you're sort of going to be struggling going back and forth. But if you ever run out of maps of like, let's say I'm trying to get into like tier 12s. And I run out of tier 12s. I run all my T10s. Then I run all my T11s. And then I'll 100% I'll have more T12s to run. But if you're doing the leapfrog correctly, like you're never going to run maps, so... Uh, yeah, early league, um, like, the thing is, like, you're saying sell synth maps early or to do them, it's important to, you know, you're gonna, you wanna have a strategy, right? So, if you have a strategy, you shouldn't, like, do this and then do that and then do this, because if you don't have the passives to run the, the synth maps, uh, then it's stupid to run them, right? But people that do buy them have these passives, so they're competing for prices considering that these passives are allocated, right? So essentially, like, you just focus on your strategy, and if you're dropping things uh, that are potentially, you know, the price is inflated because it's implied that you have the passives to run those maps, then you just sell it to those people for, uh, you know, yeah, for a bit of, for a bit of profit. Uh, yeah, I've caught up, and I think that's about it for the q and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If, uh, dude, it, I, I would love any, like, suggestions. If you watch till the end of the video, thank you so much. If you have any suggestions for any videos you'd like to see in the future, please comment below. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks, boys.